Okay, students, so let's go ahead and finish up our damage system. I'm going to go back into my twin stick pawn, and uh, I'm going to choose a spot over here, and we're going to add the any damage event. So this is an event that fires whenever anything deals us damage. So eventually we are going to have enemy projectiles that shoot at us and deal damage. We will also, currently we deal damage by if we collide with an enemy. So uh, if we get damage, it's quite simple, just like we did in the player. Uh, we're going to grab the player health and we're going to get it. And we're also going to set it. And we are going to set the new player health. And what do we have to do? We have to take player health. And I'm going to hit subtract. And we want to subtract the damage. Now remember, this can't go into here. Um, well, it can, but then it'll get mad at us. Or now it creates a float because we're subtracting an int minus a float. And now I will have to turn a float back into an integer, which I guess we could do. We could do it this way with the truncation. Uh, but I usually like to, I'm going to undo a couple times, I usually like to just truncate my damage. That way everything stays an integer. So we're going to take our health, we're going to subtract however much damage we received, and then set that as our new health. Now, previously, so this is when we take damage. If we want to be clean, we could give ourselves a nice comment. Take damage. This is also if you wanted on, on you getting hit to cause a noise, this is where it would be, or a projectile uh, or, or a particle effect, this is where it would be as well. But uh, if you recall, early on, we came up here and added to our sequence, and we said, hey, if the player health is less than zero, print a string, you died. Well, let's replace this with something a little bit better. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go back into my HUD folder. I'm going to create a new user interface widget blueprint, and I'm going to call this one Game Over. You can get much more fancy with this, but I'm going to go ahead and choose a text. I'm going to choose the center of the screen anchor. I'm going to go ahead and center justify my text. And then uh, I'm going to reset my position X and position Y here and my all of these guys uh, to the center. And so I have my size here as well. Let's change my size. Let's get up an 8-bit wonder. And we're going to call this game over. And let's see here. Let's make it like size 80 or so. And then let's fix my box to be the right size. OK, so we can now see the size of our box. So if we position our box at half of whatever our size is, I'm going to make the size 1,000 by like 120. So then if I make my position negative 500 on the x and negative 60 on the y, so half of those numbers, now it is dead center on my screen. Um, if you want to get really fancy, you can like layer these and do different things, but this is just going to work for now. I'm going to go ahead and compile that. So back in our pawn, if we are dead, I am going to... So when we cease to have health, we want to make it so the player can't do anything anymore. So I'm going to disable input. Um, and then I'm going to uh, start camera fade, which I can't do unless I have the camera component selected. Let's try this now. Camera fade. We actually need to first call the player camera manager. Get the player camera manager. And I'm going to start camera fade. Now, if we look here, it's going to come from alpha to alpha. So we want it to come from 0% fade to 100% fade, which is 1. 
uh, the duration. I'll say it takes one second to fade out. And yeah, we're going to fade through to black. We could fade to any color we want. Um, but I'm going to start a camera fade. So I won't be able to control anymore. Then I will start a camera fade. Um, we're kind of a little short on space here. I'm going to grab some of these things and move them down a bit. Let's move my shot controls here. And I want a, ni a nice good space here for our dying. Uh, I'm going to now create a widget of game over. I'm going to uh, get the player controller and attach that to the game over widget. As usual, we need to add to viewport. Um, and then we want to decide kind of how long we want to wait uh, on this game over screen. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, use a delay of, we'll say, two seconds. And then I'm going to uh, grab this return value here and remove from parent so that the game over goes away. It's not still stuck to it. Um, and then we will just open level by name. And we could put the level in here, but I want this to work in any level. So we can uh, get level name, I think, level. There we are. We can get our current level and put that in. From the current level, we can get name. I think that's right. Put that guy in here. That might work. Actually, I think it's called get current. Get current level name. There we go. So we will get the current level name. And then we're going to open the level we're currently in. That should do it. So that means whatever level we'll be in, it'll restart at the start of that level. So here is our we are dead. This is what you do. Check. All right. Let's have a look here. Uh, I'm going to need a bunch more of these guys to have enough to kill myself. So let me go ahead and copy them. I also, I guess, could have increased their damage or lowered my HP, but, you know, say la vie. So each time I hit one of these guys, I lose 10 health. Our camera fade did not work. OK, so scratch this. We uh, turns out we can't use this the way I've set up this level. But there's another way to do it. There's like five ways to skin a cat on things in Unreal. So uh, instead, we have our game over widget. And I'm going to go back into it. And uh, behind it here, I have made this. Uh, image. So this is basically I grabbed an image like this. We'll bring it in here. And uh, I filled the whole background with it, which you can see here. And I made it black. And right now I have made the uh, visibility, the render opacity, zero. So it looks like this. It's a big black background. So once again, I dragged out an image. I stretched it to what was the whole size. And then I set its color to black. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set its render opacity to 0. Because in the lower left-hand corner here, we haven't used this before. I'm going to create an animation. And I'm going to call this Game Over Fade. Uh, and with this animation selected, and with Image 0 here selected, I'm going to hit plus track and make a track for Image 0. And then we're going to make a track for Render Opacity. 
So on here, you can see our render opacity right now is one, or now it's zero. And we can hit a keyframe here. And then I'm going to move to the one second mark and set it back to one and put a keyframe there. And it should fade between, as you see here is our nice animation. And this animation is tied to this HUD widget. Now, to get it to play, we want to click in the upper right-hand corner and go to the graph. And I already have it here, but basically, with our event construct here, we want to pull out and type play animation. We want to make sure we're under user interface animation. And then on the right side, we have our game over fade animation. We're going to drag it out, connect that to the animation. And the target is self, because that is this game over. So now, when this gets added to the HUD, it will, ha it will play the fade. Uh, and we don't want it to restart or do anything like that. We want it to just play and then stay. So back in our twin stick pawn, we have here, uh, if we die, we're going to disable our input, create the game over widget, which will now fade on its own. We're going to add this to the viewport. Uh, put in a two-second delay, then remove it from the viewport, and then get our current level and reopen it. So restart whatever our current level is. So let's go ahead and look at it. So it fades out, waits two seconds, and then reloads our whole game. All right.